I first became interested in Big Sur when a woman named Margaret Owings um, uh, published a book about Big Sur uh, very, very close to her death. Um, I had written a book called Sensual Indigo, Memoir of a Renaissance Woman, which is poetry and prayers and parables, and it's all illustrated with my first book, and it was given to Margaret as a gift because she loved poetry. So she wanted to meet me. And I had no idea who she was. You know, I'd been to Big Sur a couple of times, but she was the grand dame of Big Sur in many, many ways. And I came to find that out um, when a mutual friend of ours told me that she wanted to meet me. And I sort of started to read up on her. And then I started to read about her book, which talks about all of her efforts to save the sea otters, her efforts to save the, the sea, you know, the sea lions and the, all of the cats, the big wild cats there. She's a huge environmentalist, just an, an amazing, amazing woman. So I was set to go down and see her, and she got very sick and died very shortly after that. And in the meantime, I had read her book, and I thought, this is, this is a very, very interesting woman. And she had a house that was built right below Nepenthe. It's an amazing house. It's called Wild Bird, out on this long, high-shaped cliff that's right below Nepenthe. And I wanted to see the house, and I wanted to see all about her. And, of course, I ended up writing a screenplay about her, which was something that I never intended to do. When it came time to, to write my, my first novel, I, I was in a place where I think a lot of people, including the present company, would understand that when you're a screenwriter, you get to a point in your life where you're very, very disgusted with that process. And you want to do something else, and you don't want to do everything by committee. And so you, we all have a story in us, or two, or ten. And I had a novel that I really wanted to write. And when the story about Big Sur did not come to pass as a film, I decided that I was going to write a novel. And for some reason, I guess because I had done so much work and so much effort in, in going beneath the surface of Big Sur, uh, it was a natural to make my first novel, Jasmine Dogg's Mystic Adventures in Big Sur, in volume one. Jasmine Dogg's Mystic Adventures in Big Sur is, is a book about a woman named Diana Falconer who lives in Big Sur and loves it. She actually is also a screenwriter, which is a nice coincidence. And she gets lucky, and she sells her book to Hollywood. And she ends up making the trip there and finding um, a lot of circumstances that, that she doesn't expect. And, and so the basic challenge of the book is that she ends up falling in love with a very beautiful man who happens to be a movie star. She also yearns to be at home and paint and write and be all alone by herself in Big Sur. And she has these mystical people that live around her that really, really don't like those people in Southern California. When you first go to Big Sur, you know, you may have read about it and you may have not, but it doesn't really matter because when you drive down the coast and you, you get deep into it, and you get past the Hill Ranch, and you get to Pfeiffer Beach, and you get rolling through those trees, there is a feeling that is so palpable that anyone who's human cannot ignore it. It's a place that is really magical. There are a lot of people underground in Big Sur that you don't realize are there unless you seek them out. And because I did all of the, the work that I did in researching Margaret Owings, one of the things that I did with her was that I listened to her, her oral history. And her oral history, you know, she lived there for 25 or 30 years and was responsible for the first road that went through all the way, you know, past Big Sur. And so she, she mentioned all of these people that you never read about in, in the guidebooks. 
and you know the Indian people that live down there, the, the natives, what they call the locals. And the locals are people in Big Sur who are kind of underground. They really don't come out unless you know where they, where they live. You don't see them anywhere unless you seek them out and talk to them. Most of the time, they won't talk to you unless you have an introduction. And then, when you have an introduction, they are very, very suspicious. They have been raped and murdered by the press. You know, they have been used by the press. All the stories that they've told have made them very wary. And so in order to get their, their trust, you have to be one of them. You have to be acceptable. You have to go down there and be a good person and let them see that you're a good person. So I found my way around Big Sur over many years before I really, really got the core of what it's like. Jasmine Dogs was the first book, actually, in a series of books. And by the time I got to the end of Jasmine Dogs, I realized that I had so much more story to tell that, you know, it, no way were we going to just have a sequel. We were probably going to have two or three sequels. So basically, now I have six books in the series planned. I am working right now on the second book, which I'm not going to tell the name of because it's, it's bad luck. But I have actually ended up writing a book that's a thousand pages. So I'm going to have to divide it in half because it's too long. But the whole book, all of the books, are of this place. And that is what the big deal about Jasmine Dogs and all of those books is, is that all of the books that I do are published here. They're written here. The art was painted by Erin Lee Gaffel, who is the granddaughter of Nepenthe. So she's been here forever. She has a, you know, a, a long line of, of beautiful ancestors from Big Sur. Tom Ayers, who is one of the most famous artists and, and talented musicians in this area, wrote a whole suite of music for me for the audiobook. So everything you get with, with Jasmine Dogs and all of the, the Mystic Adventures and Big Sur books are all about the place. That's the whole idea.